what if I added more Spider-Men into Across the Spider-Verse? I really enjoyed the new trailers that have been coming out for the sequel to the best superhero movie of all time, but I couldn't help but notice that these trailers have been almost entirely populated with these NPC Spider-Sona-ass characters. But this is where I come in. What if I added some of the fandom's favorite spider people into the trailer? Like Tobey Maguire, or Andrew Garfield, or even Tom Holland. They all show up later in the video, you don't have to worry about that. So anyway, I'm just gonna cut right into it and let's get started. You wanna see some real garbage? So here we have Disney's Ultimate Spider-Man, replicated in his signature art style, next to Disney's other Spider-Man, Marvel's Spider-Man. Not to be confused by the video game of better quality. I picked this specific shot because it had some empty space right next to some Spider-Men sitting down, so I figured I'd place my subjects in that conveniently empty space. They're having a debate over whose show sucked even more. The character I definitely had the most fun recreating was definitely Ultimate Spidey. I've been clear about my feelings on the voice actor in the entirety of the show itself, but after looking at a lot of the reference images and concept art and finally drawing him out, I came to appreciate the artistic choices this show made just a small bit more. Probably because I don't have to listen to Drake Bell's stupid ass voice the whole time I was drawing it, but anyway. I made sure to capture the super emotive lenses of this Spidey as perfect as I could. There's almost never a shot in any episode of this show where Spider-Man's eyes aren't making a huge new facial expression. I decided to make him look sad, because I hate him, and I enjoy seeing him suffer. Anyway, onto the only Spider-Man TV show worse than Drake Bell's. The Spider-Man from Disney's latest attempt to get your children to buy toys. This TV show is infamous for having an incredibly low effort art style and just being void of any style or flair at all. I've watched a couple of videos that have said it was due to budget cuts. If you want to check out a way more comprehensive video on that, you can check out Brown Table's Rise and Fall of Marvel Animation video. So I really could have just gotten away with drawing him all plain and boring and it would have been accurate enough for me to call it a day but I only made him slightly less plain and boring. I added some shading from the lighting into the room, and some shadow trailing off of him, and that's about it. Both of these shows suck, and I hate them. All right, so I can't go too long without dishing out some of the big boys, so here is Andrew Garfield in the TASM2 suit. I found a screenshot from the scene with the train where all the Spider-Men are climbing after Miles and Miguel, and I figured that this would be a perfect spot to put Andrew and his signature look all posed up. I had a lot of fun drawing this specific version of the costume, especially due to its color palette. I've complained in previous videos about the colors of this costume, but now that I got to draw this suit, maybe I was too harsh on it. I actually really like the, you know, kind of maroonish, well it's not maroon, that's harsh. Maybe the lighter maroon with the dark blue specifically navy blue. It's a good color combo, and you know what, I, I'll i admit I was too harsh on it. It's character development. It's not that I never liked this suit, that old video was just a way for me to air out some issues I had about it. But maybe highlighting the small issues aren't really important when the rest of the costume is already way greater than them. And the colors of the suit are fine, even if they are a little dark. For my next couple of cameos, I want to use this specific shot of Miles Morales escaping and add someone about to tackle Miles from behind. But while I'm fine with backgrounds not being of the best quality, Miles here is definitely going to need a bit of a touch up. At first I planned on just redrawing Miles, but then I figured, why not just add a different version of Miles Morales instead? I opted to go for the Miles Morales of the PS4 game, sporting his classic costume. I was tempted to put him in any one of the other costumes from the game, specifically the tracksuit since it's my favorite, but I thought the classic would work out just fine. I made sure to make his costume have distinct shading styles, bouncing from the dot texture to a simpler style for shiny areas of the costume. And now for his pursuer, Spider-Man from the Marvel vs. Capcom series. This Spider-Man has become one of my favorite looks for the characters of recent just due to his massive eyes and his overall demeanor. They very clearly took everything about Spider-Man and turned it up to the max to make him more unique when compared to the rest of the cast of the game. And I'm all for it. And then they fucking ruined him by making his voice Robbie Damon's and turned his body physique from regular Spider-Man into Giga Chad. Anyway, I wanted to be more true to this style of Spidey by keeping him accurate to his more orange hue that he always displays in game. This costume has single-handedly changed my mind on orange and blue Spider-Man. I used to hate it, but ever since I got my ass beat in an alleyway by color theory enthusiasts, I've changed my mind. That crawler assault is gonna beat the shit out of Miles, no lie. 
Lego Spider-Man. Oh, sorry. Let me back away from the mic. I know I, I some of you guys complain about my audio quality. My bad. Lego Spider-Man and Spider-Man from the animated series. There's not really much to say on this drawing other than I find it to be really cute. I mean, come on. It's Lego Spider-Man holding on to one of his bigger counterparts for dear life. I wanted this to be some sort of action shot, which you can notice from all the speed lines I added to Task Spidey. Speaking of Task Spidey, I had a lot of fun replicating the art style from the show. He's been drawn all sorts of ways by the animators of that show, usually looking a bit inconsistent between shots. I guess that sort of helps with the accuracy of the show, since it makes sense that none of these costumes would look exactly the same since Peter's always making 5 million of them whenever they break. But it also helps with me getting away with taking some liberties. The things I had to nail were his signature lenses, the cutout space on the chest for his spider logo, and his massive fucking man titties. I think I did a pretty good job. All right, all right, all right, all right. Everyone pay attention. I'm showing another movie, Spider-Man. It's the only one the general public gives a shit about, so pay attention. Here's MCU Spider-Man in his brand new costume from the end of No Way Home. I originally wanted to have him swinging past the assorted Spidey walkways, but I couldn't get the perspective of the shot to look right, so I just opted to green out the background. I also think it's super cool that the MCU is finally being called out by the correct universe number when 2099 calls back to Doctor Strange and the little nerd from one... God, this shit is so long. The little nerd from Earth 199999. Like, finally, official media that at least kinda knows what 616 should look like. Like, I know Peter Parker is technically guilty of this too, since he's referred to as 616 Spidey and Into the Spider-Verse, but at least Peter B. Parker is faithful to his actual 616 counterpart, as opposed to this adaptation. Like, that's not a diss, but you can't tell me that Tom Holland's Spider-Man is more accurate than Peter B. Parker's. But anyway, that's about it. Aside from this newer sketch that I added to actually reference 2099's acknowledgement of the MCU, imagine this drawing takes place before 99 changes his costume, and he went out of the way to beat the shit out of MCU Peter after the events of No Way Home. Alright, now let's finally talk about my favorite drawing I've done. Spider-Ma'am and Spider-Bitch! Now, I know I can't just drop these characters on you without explaining them, don't worry. Spider-Ma'am is a version of Aunt May who gained spider powers after Peter forgot his lunch on his way to the science exhibit, and May had to meet him on the way there, only to be bitten by the radioactive spider. Or at least that's what I think happened. It's, it's been a while, I'm not exactly brushed up on this old lady's origin. Spider-Bitch is one that I even know less about. So, apparently, Spider-Bitch is Ashley Barton, the granddaughter of Spider-Man, and the daughter of... Hawkeye? What the fuck? I guess she's part of the old man Logan storyline, so shit is just fucked up there anyway, so I'm not questioning it. But anyway, I'm super happy with this art. I love the fact that it's all women in the shot, spider women, and I love how I replicated the colors of the scene onto the characters. And I just think I did a good job overall. Also, I didn't fucking make spider bitches titties that big on purpose. That's just how the reference looks. You want some more movie Spider-Man? Was this shit not enough? Do you want more? Fine. I'll give you more movie Spider-Man. But only if you like and subscribe. It's Spider-Man 24-7 on this channel, so you'd love it if you love Spider-Man. Anyway, who else would be chasing a subway train other than Sam Raimi's Spider-Man? I wanted something fun and dynamic, and I noticed that there's a shot in the trailer where you can actually see the 2099 train fly by. So I figured I'd snag the last frame of it and draw Tobey Maguire himself over it. Now that I'm finally drawing a character who doesn't have an art style, here's where I can actually branch off and try to do something unique with how I draw these characters. I say that like I haven't drawn other characters devoid of style within this video. Because I wrote this part earlier in the script. I decided to ditch the standard silver webbing look and go with something completely white instead. This makes the webs pop out against the suit a bit more, and I think it creates a greater contrast against the darker blue portions of the costume. There isn't really much to say here. I added comic dots onto the shading, and that's about it in terms of art style. It's Spider-Man. Do you like Danny DeVito in Fortnite? God, I wonder who said yes to that question. Anyway, here is Fortnite Spider-Man doing the gritty. I know some people might be upset at me for not making this Spidey have a traditional Spider-Man pose, but I have a good reason. We already have Spideys who do that, so making this one do the gritty just makes most sense to me. It makes it more unique, 
and it's and it's fitting. I mean, come on, it's Fortnite. Anyway, here's the Danny DeVito I promised earlier. One of my chatters suggested I draw him as a joke when I was drawing this drawing live. Draw, draw, drawing. So many drawing. Ooh. And then I figured, why not? Here's Danny DeVito in his Spider-Man outfit from the iconic meme. This goddamn costume should be in a museum. Here's Kane. I wanted to splash some more pink on him. That's really all I have to say in terms of this specific drawing. It was one of the first drawings I tried to do to emulate the Spider-Verse art style, which I think is really apparent. Anyway, I found it odd that Kane was never shown in any of the trailers from what I could see. I honestly feel like Spider-Verse toned down the amount of possible cameos they couldn't have in favor of adding these before-mentioned NPC Spider-Man in. But that's okay, I think. Even if it means more noticeable Spider-Verse characters get left out in the end. Maybe it just means they're keeping him for later. But anyway, uh... There he is. There's your edgy Spider-Man for the cool kids. Alright, only real PSM heads know about this one. These are my boys! My Spider-Sonas! I used to have a comic book about them back in the day, but I started to dislike the book's direction as I went on with it, and I ended up canceling it. That book sucks. Stop asking me to bring it back. I plan on bringing them back someday, since I have a massive universe filled with heroes and villains all lined up to fight with them, but I probably won't get to soon since I'm working on my Spider-Man show, but essentially the plot of the comic is two boys become Spider-Man in a world where Spider-Man is still a fictional character as we know and love him. They have to determine how realistic being Spider-Man actually is when compared to real-life vigilanteism, as their brotherly bond keeps them together through all the hardship. They sort of learn to be Spider-Man through each other. There's still a lot of love in this universe from me, and you know what, if the fans egg me on enough, maybe I'll bring it back someday. And that's all! If you have any ideas for who I should have drawn or added, any more Spider-Men you would like to see, mouth off at me in the comments. If this video gets 7,000 likes, I'll draw more Spider-Man, and I'll make a part two. Hi everyone, thank you again Kai for letting me borrow some space on your video about Spider-Verse. Uh, speaking of Spider-Verse, hello everyone, Trey from TG Comps, or Trey Gonzalez Compositions here, and I have a little proposition for all of you. We're all super excited for Across the Spider-Verse, and to celebrate its soon arrival to theaters, I have a really cool way that I could give back to the community. Enter Spider-Sona, Across the spider Things. This endeavor is all about chance and creativity. And all you have to do is create a hero image of your very own spider character, or spider sona. And not only that, I want to see three different musical inspirations from you guys. Something that you think your spider character would vibe to. And the best part? The winners of the sweepstakes are awarded their very own spider sona theme. A complete track that emulates all that they are as a spider person. More information can be found on the Google form I created to help organize all the submissions. Links, as always, are down in the description. Show off your artistic skills and your musical tastes in this sweepstakes. Show off your artistic skills and your musical tastes, and you could be one of five lucky people to win your very own Spider Sona theme in honor and dedication to Across the Spider Verse. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time. This video has been in production probably like since, I want to say about a week actually, a week today, this video has been in production. I'll probably finish editing it by Friday, which will have it be up by then, maybe Saturday. You guys won't know until it's uploaded. You guys won't even know the process until it's all over, but yeah. Yeah, uh, this is the end card, by the way. This is where you go when you want to know juicy tidbits about the process of this channel, my life, updates, etc. If you like me that much, stick around. But yeah, um... Really excited for Spider-Verse. Uh, it's coming out in pretty much like a month. Pretty much like a little over a month, month and a half. I'm excited to see it. I'm nervous. I'm scared. I'm pooping and shitting my pants. But you know what? I have faith. I have hope. I have optimism. Despite what Zeb Wells has been writing and all the other shit with the MCU, I have hope that there can be a good Spider-Man product again. I do. I really do. Anyway, Marvel Comics... Hire me to do Spider-Man shit, and I will change your company. People will love you. No one will ever send hate mail to you ever again. Uh, peace. Peace and love.